Thank you. One one zero on the heading intercept final bearing. Shark four six, be advised. Foreign vessel has entered the AO grid. November five seven one one. Al copy. Shark four six, good copy. Dragonfly 2-1, possible detection on your passive sonar point. Recommend dropping into active. I'll copy. Dragonfly 2-1, copy. Stand by. Hostile sub detected. Danger close. I say again. Big Wolf to all units. Hostile sub detected. Danger close. General Porter, General Porters, all hands man your battle stations. Set material conditions even throughout the ship. Make same report to DC Central. We've got visual bogeys approaching 227. This is Call of Plastic. Our mission is to recon the Sunny Days Entertainment Air Force 47-piece fun bucket. While it certainly lives up to its title, Air Force, featuring plenty of aircraft, this bucket also boasts an impressive array of naval assets. Let's recon! with a catchy lettering fun bucket right in the middle with cartoony artwork that features a jet, a ship, and a submarine. And the one thing I respect about the artwork is that it does reflect the actual contents in the bucket. So you'll find an F-22 jet, an HSV ship there, and a submarine as a toy company. Sunny Days is very much uh, involved with their products and that's reflected in something as simple as the artwork. As detailed as their figures are, it makes a lot of sense. We move forward to the lid. This features this arctic blue color in rocky detailing. This could be used as an additional piece. Uh, ships could be stalking their targets around it, uh, similar to a World of Warships type scenario. You'll see here it also features an ice carry handle. Now onto the deployment. The lid is secured by three separate pieces of tape. The lid is a screw top, very sturdy design. And here we have it. It's like a nice overview of the contents inside. Black and gray, nice contrast. Let's get ready to make a splash. Here is this mountain object. That is the 47th piece right there. At the overview, we have a confirmed total of 47 pieces that includes the mountain. Slight disparities in the balance of both air and naval assets. The Greys have two of each jet fighter, whereas the Black Forces have two of each ship. The Black Forces have four submarines and one of each uh, design of the jets, and they feature four helicopters, whereas the Greys only have two. 
We move on to the inspection lineup featuring the carriers first. Uh, given the positioning of the control tower, I've identified this as a Nimitz class carrier. You can see these models feature takeoff and landing zones and elevators. Next up is the HSV-2. This was more or less a, an experimental design, uh, but it was deployed during the 2003 invasion of Iraq. It acted as a staging platform for the Marine Fleet Anti-Terrorism Unit and the U U.S. Navy SEALs. These models feature, of course, the two catamarans at the bottom, and the top of the craft is very low and sleek, a very stealth-like. Lessons learned from the HSV program eventually led to the LCS, Literal Combat Ship. Featured here is the LCS-2. This ship was designed for near-shore operations. It too acted as a staging platform for special operation forces and boasted broader operational capacity than its predecessor. These models possess the crisp angles that you'd find on the real-life ship. Next is the LCS-1. This was Lockheed Martin's answer to General Dynamics version, the LCS-2. This model features the traditional hull design, but you have slanted angles at the top, as well as a flat helipad at the back and a gun in the front. Next up is this model. This appears to be based off of a World War II type battleship but I'm having trouble uh, identifying exactly which one. It looks like it could potentially be an Iowa class, but I'm not entirely sure. So I'm gonna ask that you guys help me be able to identify what this model is. You'll certainly see a lot of cannons on there, so you don't wanna make this guy mad. Next up is the Zumwalt class of destroyers. These feature very stealthy angles. At first glance, it doesn't look like these ships could do much, but looks can be deceiving. The weapon systems are actually hidden away and only show themselves when about to be fired. These guys possess a lot of firepower. Next up we have this model. Now if I had to take a guess, this looks like a cruiser to me. Now, some of you naval guys out there, you may be able to better identify it specifically for what it is. The model features a large brig with communication towers on top and guns on the forward and stern sides. We move to the submarines. There are actually two different submarine models. The first model featured here is the broader one. Uh, this appears to be a nuclear attack sub. Sleek, simple design. And then we move on to the next model. This to me looks like a Los Angeles class attack submarine. Uh, thank goodness we have a lot of these in our fleet. The helicopters featured in this set are the old uh, SH-3H Sea Kings. Uh, the newer ones are a little bit bigger, a little bit better. Uh, but these guys were retired in 2006. Still a capable helicopter used by other militaries around the world. Next, we move on to the fixed-wing aircraft. Uh, despite their small size, the, each of these aircraft feature detailing such as panels across the top, you see the flaps along the backs of the wings, and you can easily distinguish where the canopies are at. The models are of predominantly American aircraft, but as you see here, it does feature one European design. It's the Eurofighter Typhoon, or EF-2000. We roll around to one of my favorite jets of all time. That's the F-16 uh, right next to the A-10 Warthog. Uh, the set also features two Harrier jump jets. And then the last set of planes here, they are propeller aircraft. Uh, these look like the Hawkeyes to me, but I know they don't have the large uh, radar dome on top. Uh, needless to say, if these are the E-2s, then they are a vital part of command and control. The final piece in the inspection lineup is this terrain feature. Uh, this looks to be a type of a solid rock or, or mountain, uh, but the plastic that it's made out of, very thin plastic, it does look like some type of an iceberg. Next, we'll take a closer look at the models. Uh, here is the LCS-2. Now, this was my favorite uh, of the two designs. You have the LCS-1, 
but the LCS2 just looks cooler, uh, and I think it, it's usually featured a lot more in uh, shows. Uh, then we'll take a look at this uh, attack submarine, or um, excuse me, this is the nuclear submarine. So this looks like it's capable of carrying nuclear munitions. So this is one of those strategic assets that the uh, U.S. Navy possesses. Uh, we'll take a look at the attack submarine. You can see a bit more narrow or a little shorter, uh, but this is would be the uh, LA uh, class attack submarine. The Zubant uh, design here, very cool design, uh, very pointy, very sharp. The bottom is flat, so this is a clean design. They did a good job on the detailing here. But then we have the cruiser. The cruiser, I think, is the most interesting to look at uh, because there's a lot going on. A lot going on on the forward side uh, and as well as the back side. Uh, of course, going from there, we'll go to this World War II battleship. Uh, I see uh, guns on the front and the back. Um, looks like two communication masts uh, in the center. I mean, even compared to these modern ships, there's something just vastly intimidating about this guy. So uh, the HSV is a really cool design. Uh, it's featured on their artwork, uh, but I'm still surprised that they added it into the set. Uh, it's not a common one, but it, it's definitely one of the more cooler looking ships. Uh, the aircraft carrier features detailing along the top uh, and the sides here. So uh, while it's simple, uh, it is much appreciated. So the carriers, when compared to the aircraft, they are considerably smaller, uh, but they are just large enough to where you can set some aircraft on top of them. When we take a look at the Hawkeye here. Uh, the detailing along the side is a bit narrow, but uh, if you focus on the top, you can see a lot more details there. Uh, then we take a look at the Harrier jet. Uh, nice simple detailing along the top again the sides you know not a lot of emphasis put necessarily on that side angle uh, but certainly the top down is great to look at the helicopters rotors they do spin they spin uh, quite easily uh, they work better if you have them uh, positioned upright uh, I think that's true with most hel uh, helicopter models the uh, back rotor does not spin now, let's take a look at the F-22. Uh, this is featured on the artwork. Uh, side angles, very narrow, but that top down, that's a, a nice design there. And of course, we're gonna take a look at the F-18, featured in Top Gun. I had to put them in the intro. Again, a nice degree of detailing. Lastly, we'll take a look at the F-16, my favorite uh, jet to play with in the video games as it has a multi-role capability. Now, the pressing question is, will it float? Our ships have docked around the test pool where we'll soon determine their buoyancy. Here we go. First up, the aircraft carrier. Time to earn your money, Admiral. But I do notice this is a two-part construction, so I'm thinking uh, water may be able to get in. All right, so. See up, list to the side. Now we put the black aircraft carrier in. Uh, about the same thing, listing to the side. Let's see what we get with the cruiser. Cruiser sits nice and steady. Look at that. All right. Now we put in the gray cruiser again. Nice, steady, upright. Let's try the old World War II battleship here. Uh, I'm thinking this should stand upright. It's got that broad base. All right. Suspicions confirmed. Wide base floats just fine. Zumwalt class, narrow, narrow base. I think he's going to tip over, but we'll see. No, surprisingly not. He remains upright. Submarine, again, too. Submarine stays uh, atop the water. Try the helicopter. Why not? Helicopter <laughs> floats. All right. Let me go get a jet. All right. Let's see here. Okay, about well, LCS-2 for the heck of it. Uh, oh, that nice, nice recovery there. All right, F-16 jet for the heck of it. Floats just fine. Mayday, mayday, E-2 Hawkeye down. Let's see if we can flood that lower compartment of the aircraft carrier. Uh, looks like it flooded a little bit. It kind of kind of went down below the water. All right, buoyancy trials uh, were a major success. All have passed. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> uh, alas, we've arrived at the debrief. If you made it this far, thank you so much. I hope you all found the opening entertaining. I anticipate doing that more as we move forward. Uh, that all depends on the set, and if the set has enough character, that'll be at my discretion, but I definitely want to provide more action intros. I've been learning a whole lot, and uh, learned the importance of storyboarding as well. Once I got into it, I had to like make these scenes as I went. So as I got going, I really didn't have much direction. I had a vision, but just I didn't know the, quite the right direction on how to get there. Well, that about does it for this operation. I'm Bill Greenwater for Call of Plastic. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.